professional. Quit counting the guys that went on to play pro ball. We even had one guy in the PGA Tour. The casting process for the 1987 TV series was a fascinating journey. Producers wanted fresh faces, so they held open casting calls. Johnny Depp, then known for his role in A Nightmare on Elm Street, walked in and captivated them with his unique look and charisma. His audition sealed the deal, making him the perfect fit for the role of Tom Hansen. For the character of Doug Penhall, Peter DeLuise, son of renowned actor Dom DeLuise, caught their attention. Having acted in a few projects, he had the necessary experience and chemistry with Depp, which became evident during their shared audition. Holly Robinson, a young singer and actress, was chosen for the role of Judy Hoffs. She stood out due to her singing ability and strong audition, bringing a fresh perspective to the cast. Dustin Guin, a Vietnamese refugee, initially struggled to find acting work. However, his persistence paid off when he landed the role of Harry Truman Aoki. His real-life experiences added depth to his character, making him a valuable addition to the show. Richard Grieco, a former model, joined the cast in the second season as Dennis Booker. His rugged good looks and acting chops made him an instant hit with the audience, adding another layer to the show's dynamic. The casting process for the series was a blend of luck, talent, and chemistry. Each actor brought something unique to their roles, creating a memorable ensemble that resonated with audiences, making the show a lasting success. You're Vicky West, right? Yeah, who are you? I'm, uh... The director of the TV series, 21 Jump Street, Stephen Hopkins, brought a unique vision to the show. With a background in music videos, Hopkins approached the series with a dynamic and innovative style. He drew inspiration from the French New Wave movement, incorporating long takes, handheld cameras, and naturalistic performances into the show. Hopkins' collaborative approach was crucial to the success of the series. He worked closely with the cast and crew, encouraging their input and ideas. For instance, he allowed the actors to develop their characters' backstories and motivations, which added depth and authenticity to their performances. Moreover, Hopkins' creative use of lighting and color enhanced the show's visual appeal. He often used high-contrast lighting to create a gritty, urban atmosphere, reflecting the series' focus on undercover police work in inner-city neighborhoods. Additionally, Hopkins employed a cool color palette to convey the characters' emotional states and the show's themes of alienation and disillusionment. The director's innovative style and collaborative approach helped 21 Jump Street become a groundbreaking television series. Hopkins' willingness to take risks and push boundaries resulted in a show that resonated with audiences and left a lasting impact on popular culture. I want to be notified the minute there's any change. Do you remember the TV series that launched Johnny Depp's career, 21 Jump Street? Aired from 1987 to 1991, this show not only featured memorable storylines but also tackled important social issues. Many scenes and moments from this series have left a lasting impact on its viewers, even today. Perhaps you recall the episode where Depp's character, Tom Hansen, goes undercover in a high school to investigate a drug ring. Or maybe you remember the emotional episode where Hansen's partner, Doug Penhall, grapples with the death of his wife. Whatever your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this TV series, we would love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. And get ready for some fun facts coming up. Did you know that the show's creator, Patrick Hasberg, was a former police officer? Or that the iconic theme song was performed by the band, The Flaming Lips? Keep watching this video to learn more about the shocking, funny, and sad facts about this beloved TV series. Where are you? <laughs> Louise! Louise, what's going on here? What are you doing? What about Tom? No. The production of the 80s TV series took place primarily in Vancouver, Canada, where both indoor and outdoor sets were designed with meticulous attention to detail. The show's central location, a revamped chapel serving as the precinct for undercover police officers, was built from scratch on a soundstage. Set designers drew inspiration from various architectural styles to create a unique and authentic space, reflecting the series' blend of reality and drama. Outdoor scenes were filmed across Vancouver, with the city's diverse neighborhoods and landscapes doubling for locations in the U.S. The show's mobile nature, with characters often working on the move, allowed for creative use of local environments. However, this presented logistical challenges, as the production team had to secure permits and coordinate with local authorities for each new location. One notable innovative technique employed during filming was the use of lightweight, 
portable video cameras. These cameras enable the crew to capture action-packed scenes in real time, without the need for heavy stationary equipment. This new technology also allowed for more flexible filming, as the cameras could be easily moved and adjusted to capture different angles and perspectives. Despite the show's success, its production faced several obstacles. The tight filming schedule, often requiring episodes to be shot within a week, placed significant pressure on the cast and crew. Additionally, coordinating filming locations and obtaining necessary permits proved challenging, particularly when shooting on public property. In summary, the production of the TV series combined traditional set design with innovative filming techniques, resulting in a visually engaging and immersive viewing experience. The show's use of Vancouver as a stand-in for various U.S. locations, along with the challenges of coordinating filming in a mobile environment, added to the production's complexity. Nevertheless, the team's dedication and innovative spirit ensured the show's success, leaving a lasting impact on the television landscape. The TV series, which debuted in 1987, gained a significant following and is still remembered today for its unique approach to law enforcement stories. The show followed a group of young-looking police officers who went undercover in high schools to solve crimes and tackle various social issues. One of the show's standout aspects was its diverse cast, which included actors like Johnny Depp, who played the lead role of Tom Hansen. Depp's portrayal of Hansen was nuanced and complex, showcasing his acting range and versatility. The show also featured other talented actors, such as Dustin Guin, Peter DeLuise, and Holly Robinson PD. The show's writers did an excellent job of balancing the action and drama, weaving in social issues that were relevant at the time. From drug abuse to gang violence, the show tackled it all, making it a thought-provoking and engaging watch. The show's success led to a movie adaptation in 2012, which was also well-received by audiences and critics alike. The film paid homage to the original series while adding a modern twist, making it accessible to a new generation of viewers. Overall, the TV series was a groundbreaking show that left a lasting impact on the world of television. Its diverse cast, engaging storylines, and social relevance make it a must-watch for anyone who enjoys a good crime drama. The show's legacy continues to resonate today, inspiring new generations of actors, writers, and filmmakers. Teacher. First day, he said to us all, work hard and do good work. What's your point? I came downtown. The music in the show plays a crucial role in setting the tone and mood for each episode. The creation of the musical score and soundtrack was a collaborative effort between various composers and musicians. For the show's instrumental music, composer Eric N. Morgison was brought on board. He aimed to create a score that would complement the narrative and emotional tone of the series. Morgison drew inspiration from the show's setting and themes, crafting a sound that was both gritty and emotional. He used synthesizers and drum machines to create a modern, urban sound that fit the world of the show. In addition to the score, the show also featured a soundtrack of popular music from the late 1980s. Music supervisor Kathy Nelson was responsible for selecting the songs that would be featured in each episode. She aimed to choose tracks that would enhance the emotional impact of the scenes and reflect the tastes of the show's young audience. The soundtrack featured a wide range of artists, from established acts like the Rolling Stones and In. Excess to up-and-coming bands like the Pixies and Red Hot Chili Peppers. The music was often used to punctuate key moments in the show, adding an extra layer of emotion and energy. According to Morgison, the music was intended to be a supporting character in the show, helping to tell the story and enhance the viewer's experience. He noted that the music was designed to complement and enhance the action on screen rather than overpowering it. Nelson echoed this sentiment, stating that the music was chosen to add to the popular 80s TV series, Judy Hoffs, played by Holly Robinson P. Day, has a badge number of 714. Her middle name is Anne, but her mother affectionately refers to her as Judith Marie Hoffs in the episode In the Custody of a Clown. 
The show is known for giving early roles to many future Hollywood stars before they became famous. These details add depth to the characters and provide a glimpse into the background of the actors who brought them to life. One of the most iconic scenes in the TV series is undoubtedly the undercover drug bust in the school gym. The director brilliantly uses low-key lighting, casting long shadows, and creating a tense atmosphere. The performance of Johnny Depp, playing the lead role of Officer Tom Hansen, is noteworthy. His portrayal of a nervous yet determined undercover cop is both convincing and compelling. In another memorable scene, Hansen has a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with a troubled teenager. The cinematography here is simple, yet effective, with a close-up shot of Depp's face, capturing the raw emotion of the moment. Depp's performance is subtle, yet powerful, making the audience truly empathize with the character's struggles. The show's impact on the audience is evident in the way it tackles serious social issues like drug abuse and juvenile delinquency. The filmmakers aimed to create a show that was not only entertaining but also socially relevant. In an interview, Depp said, We wanted to do something that was more than just a cop show. We wanted to make a difference. The show's direction, performance, and cinematography all contribute to its enduring popularity. The iconic scenes are not just memorable, they also resonate with the audience on a deeper level, leaving a lasting impact. As Depp himself put it, I think that's what makes a scene iconic, when it can touch people's lives in a meaningful way. After the second season of the popular TV series, plans were made for a spin-off titled City Court. The intention was to follow the cases from the show through the court system. A two-hour pilot was planned, with Tom Hansen on trial for murder. However, the 1988 writer's strike prevented the series from being produced. The murder trial storyline was later used in the third season finale. As the show's lead actor, Johnny Depp, became increasingly frustrated, he began to make unusual suggestions for his character. One such suggestion was that the other characters would discover Tom Hansen's obsession with peanut butter, finding him covered in it while naked. Frederick Forrest, who played Captain Richard Jenko, spent a lot of time playing law enforcement agents on television in the mid-80s. In addition to his role on the show, he played real-life detective Bob Keppel in the Ted Bundy two-part television movie, The Delivered Stranger. It also says here that you failed to properly identify yourself to the suspect, that you may the 1987 TV series, often referred to as the film or the show, had a significant cultural and social impact. The series resonated with audiences, particularly young viewers, due to its innovative approach of casting young-looking actors as undercover police officers in high schools. This unique storyline allowed the show to tackle contemporary issues faced by teenagers, such as drug abuse, teen pregnancy, and gang violence, making it relatable and impactful. Moreover, the series is often credited with launching the career of Johnny Depp, who played a prominent role in the show. Depp's subsequent success in Hollywood further solidified the cultural significance of the series. The show also influenced pop culture in various ways. For instance, the series' distinctive fashion choices, such as the iconic pastel-colored windbreakers, became popular trends among young viewers. The series' theme song, In the Heat of the Night, performed by the band Rough Trade, gained popularity and became a staple of 80s music. Furthermore, the show contributed to discussions on relevant social and cultural themes. By addressing issues such as homophobia, racism, and sexual assault, the series sparked important conversations and raised awareness about these topics. The show's frank and honest portrayal of these issues helped to break down barriers and challenge societal norms. In conclusion, the 1987 TV series had a profound cultural and social impact resonating with audiences, influencing pop culture, and contributing to discussions on relevant social and cultural themes. Its innovative storytelling, relatable characters, and frank discussions of contemporary issues helped to make it a beloved and enduring part of television history. Get for $100. Just tell me what you want. <laughs> I'm gonna go around them. In the TV series, Barney Martin made two separate appearances. Initially, he played the role of Johnny Depp's partner in the pilot episode, and later featured as an alleged kidnapper in In the Custody of a Clown. Johnny Depp and Peter DeLuise contributed to the opening theme song by singing the jump backup vocals, while Holly Robinson Petey delivered the lead vocals. Interestingly, Petey was the only cast member who remained with the show throughout its entire run. Sorry, 
sorry I'm late. I was uh, working on some stuff. Okay, okay. So. The 1987 TV series, often simply referred to as The Show, received mixed reviews from critics. Some praised its innovative approach to tackling teenage issues, while others criticized it for being overly formulaic. The Los Angeles Times described it as an entertaining, well-crafted series that manages to be both hip and square. On the other hand, the New York Times panned it as a series so relentlessly formulaic that it makes Miami Vices look like war and peace. Despite the mixed critical reception, the series was a hit with audiences, particularly among teenagers. It became one of the highest rated shows on Fox in its first season and helped launch the careers of several young actors, including Johnny Depp. The show also received several award nominations. In 1988, it was nominated for four Primetime Emmy Awards, including Outstanding Drama Series and Outstanding Lead Actor in a Drama Series for Johnny Depp. Depp would go on to win the award, becoming one of the youngest actors to do so. The show also received nominations for Outstanding Sound Editing and Outstanding Directing for a Drama Series. The accolades that the series received are significant for those involved, as they helped establish their careers and solidify their place in television history. The Emmy nominations, and win for Johnny Depp in particular, were a major boost to his career and helped him transition from television to film. The show's success also helped pave the way for other police procedurals that focused on teenage issues, such as Beverly Hills, 9021, and Dawson's Creek. Overall, while the critical reception of the show was mixed, its popularity with audiences and award recognition are a testament to its impact and enduring legacy in television history. What good things are going to happen here? What bad things? The plumbing. <laughs> As Johnny Depp's fame grew, he became increasingly disillusioned with the show. To amuse himself, he would change his lines. Initially, Depp agreed to a six-year contract for the series, believing it wouldn't last more than one season. He also wanted to work with Frederick Forrest and found it difficult to turn down the money. However, by the third season, Depp was chafing at the series' success and the scripts. He began to complain and give listless performances. Meanwhile, the character of Booker, played by Richard Grieco, was supposed to be killed off at the end of the third season, but Grieco's popularity led to a spin-off series, Booker. By the end of the third season, Grieco was receiving more fan mail than any other cast member, including Depp. Depp's lawyers eventually helped him leave the show after the fourth season. Depp's presence had been instrumental in the series' success, but by the third season, he was ready to move on to film offers. His discontent with the scripts and the show's success led to his departure. Thank you. During the filming of the show, the cast and crew faced unique challenges and shared memorable moments. One such instance involved the lead actor, who was known for his dedication, performing his own stunts. In a particular scene, he insisted on scaling a fence without a stunt double. The crew was initially hesitant, but eventually agreed. The take was successful, adding authenticity to the scene and boosting the actor's confidence. Another anecdote from the set includes the camaraderie that developed among the young cast members. They would often play pranks on each other, lightening the mood during long shooting days. This bond translated on screen, contributing to the natural chemistry between the characters. The production team also had to be creative with their locations, transforming everyday places into the diverse settings required for the series. A local high school became a regular filming spot, with students occasionally watching the shoots. This added a layer of excitement to the school's atmosphere and allowed the show to capture a genuine high school environment. These stories reflect the spirit and dedication that went into creating the series, making it a memorable experience for everyone involved. What got you in in this place anyway? In the 80s TV series, Johnny Depp and Dustin Guin were key players, appearing in 82 out of 102 episodes. Despite this, they were credited for all episodes. Depp had an unusual habit of making himself sick with a supposed chocolate allergy to avoid filming. His co-star, Peter Delois, recalls having to monitor Depp's chocolate intake from the crew vending machines. In the third episode, Sal Jenko, also known as Sal Blowfish Banducci, made his appearance as a car mechanic. His character added an interesting layer to the show, although he only appeared in one episode. Depp's chocolate allergy antics were a challenge for the production team, but they managed to work around it. The show's success was largely due to the chemistry between Depp and Gillian, who were the faces of the series. 
Jinko's one-time appearance was also noteworthy, adding a new dimension to the episode he was in. I was an ugly kid, actually. My parents sent me to school with a bag over my head. But, uh... The 1987 TV series, 21 Jump Street, holds a significant place in film history as one of the first shows to tackle controversial topics like drugs, racism, and homophobia. It paved the way for more mature programming. The series' unique blend of police procedural and teen drama made it a hit among young viewers, leading to a resurgence in the cop show genre. Moreover, the show's influence extends beyond television. Its 2012 film adaptation, starring Jonah Hill and Channing Tatum, was a critical and commercial success. The film not only paid homage to the original series, but also brought the concept to a new audience. Its self-aware humor and meta-narrative approach were praised for adding a fresh take on the source material. The film's success led to a sequel in 2014, further solidifying the franchise's place in film history. These adaptations also brought attention back to the original series, inspiring a new generation of viewers to explore the show. In terms of filmmaking, 21 Jump Street demonstrated the potential of adapting television shows into successful films. This trend has continued, with shows like Mission Impossible, Star Trek, and Battlestar Galactica all receiving big screen treatments. Furthermore, the series' impact can be seen in the current wave of nostalgia-driven reboots and revivals. Shows like Gilmore Girls, Full House, and Twin Peaks have all been revived, often to critical acclaim. This trend can be traced back to the success of 21 Jump Street, which proved that there is an audience for revisiting beloved properties. In conclusion, the 1987 TV series 21 Jump Street has left an indelible mark on film history. Its influence can be seen in the adaptations it inspired, the revival trend it contributed to, and the new audiences it introduced to the world of television. I checked it out. Mark Stevens, father, Mozek. In his first starring role since The Partridge Family, David Cassidy took on the part of an undercover cop posing as a student in the TV show David Cassidy Man Undercover. This series, which aired from 1978-1979, served as the inspiration for much of what would become 21 Jump Street. Richard Grieco, who played Dennis Booker in 21 Jump Street, reportedly received more fan mail than Johnny Depp during their time on the show. This led to the creation of his own spin-off series, Booker, which only lasted one season. The holding cell in the Jump Street Chapel featured a cot that was occasionally used by the actors. If an actor had been out partying the night before and wanted to ensure they wouldn't be late for work, they would sleep on the cot to avoid getting in trouble. Broke down. She told Molly what to say. Oh, what are you talking about? He failed the polygraph test. He failed the polygraph. During the filming of the popular 80s TV series, Johnny Depp had a unique habit of wearing a tube sock in his pants as a joke. Depp's castmate, Holly Robinson Pete, has an interesting connection to television history as well. Her father, Matt Robinson, was the original Gordon on the beloved series Sesame Street, while her mother, Dolores Robinson, is an actress and producer. The show also had a familial connection through Peter DeLuise, who had both of his brothers, Michael and David, and his father, Dom, make appearances on the series. The show was known for its talented cast and ability to bring in guest stars with various backgrounds and connections to the industry. I was the first Vietnamese person in St. Louis. I went to high school there. Before they became household names on Beverly Hills, 902.0, Jason Priestley and Shannon Doherty made appearances on another popular TV series of the time. Priestley had roles in two separate episodes, including Mean Streets and Pastel Houses, where he played different characters. Peter DeLuise, who also starred in the series, went on to pursue a career in directing after the show ended. As for Holly Robinson Pete, she was recently honored with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame for her contributions to television. It's fascinating to see how the paths of these actors and actresses intersected and diverged after their time on the series. Their success serves as a testament to their talent and hard work in the world of entertainment. At trying out for a college scholarship. Yeah, I know that. So what are you? In police work, Jump Street is slang for the starting point. The popular TV series from the late 80s adopted this term as its title, featuring young-looking officers working undercover in high schools. This show is known for its product placement, with brands like Coca-Cola and Budget making appearances. One interesting fact about this series is that it served as the basis for the comedy films 21 Jump Street and 22 Jump Street. These movies revealed the fates of the show's characters, 
providing a sense of closure for fans. The show may have aired over three decades ago, but its influence continues to be felt in popular culture. They ran out in the ice. He couldn't skate. And everybody's coming up to me telling me, oh, he's going to kill you, he's going to kill you. The television series, set in the state of Washington, never explicitly mentions its location. However, a fake license displayed in one episode refers to Washington as the beautiful evergreen state, hinting at the show's setting. Interestingly, two of the actors, Peter DeLuise and Gina Nemo, who played Doug Penhall and Dorothy, respectively, were married in real life while they were dating on the show. In a related anecdote, Johnny Depp, who played a significant role in the series, once painted over a billboard featuring his character. He did this because he didn't like the picture or the message the billboard conveyed. A security guard stopped him, but when he realized it was Johnny's own face on the billboard, he allowed him to finish what he was doing. This incident highlights Depp's unconventional approach to his public image during his time on the show. Out of his room in the middle of the night and vanished! Why is that so difficult to understand? I guess I just have a little trouble lying, that's all. Well... Did the TV series 21 Jump Street leave a lasting impression on you when it first aired in 1987? We'd love to hear about your experiences and memories related to this groundbreaking show. Perhaps you were captivated by the young cast, including a fresh-faced Johnny Depp, or maybe the gritty storylines resonated with you. Whatever your connection to the film, we'd love to hear about it. Did the show influence your perspective on cinema or inspire you to explore new genres? Or did you simply enjoy tuning in each week to see what trouble the undercover cops would get into next? Whatever your thoughts, we encourage you to share them with us and your fellow cinema enthusiasts. Join the conversation by liking, sharing, and subscribing for more cinematic explorations. Let's celebrate the impact and influence of this iconic series together. I'm a police officer, and I can arrest you right now for breaking...